no one would give a 17 year old uh, you know a skid loader so we basically at least that one we, and we bought this one guys can I ask you something how did you acquire the skills because that's that seems to be a big hurdle for a lot of guys is how do I actually do the job yep, the first you, time you go so this I actually bought so when I was 16 I worked for a big commercial landscape company nearby and I basically took everything I made that summer before I even started the business and bought this so my next question is, is how did you guys figure out on your own to bid a forty thousand dollar project like this? You think like every how much fuel that's gonna burn a day, how much I'm paying that guy a day, what our overhead is a day. Just figure out what it's gonna cost you, how many days, and then just plan accordingly. You wanna make thirty percent or fifty percent? I always shoot for fifty percent. After overhead, after fuel, labor, everything, fifty percent margin. And are you hit are you guys hitting fifty percent? About 35 to 40. 35 to 40, sometimes 50 on smaller jobs. It, anytime someone calls you to do a project, if they had a friend that does that, you wouldn't be there. So become their friend that does landscaping or excavating. Make a connection with the homeowner and, and then you can basically get whatever you want for the job. Okay. And then you're their customer for life too. Because yep. we have several customers, they have a job, they don't even want to bid. This is what they want to do and put me on your schedule. Yep. We've got younger kids that are watching this that want to own their own company. You guys have done it what would you say to the 10 11 12 13 14 15 year olds that want to do and get to where you are where you're putting in you're doing 600 and some thousand plus dollars a year marlene do you I'm want to outside of my comfort zone <laughs> like like if i'm not going out of my comfort zone i'm bored that's how i've always been like I, I have to constantly be doing something doing something new so like if i don't do anything out of my comfort zone for a day or two i'll just go look around just for something to do that i i, I my that little voice i said no don't do that oh you got other places to be like no if you're not going out of your comfort zone, you're not growing. You're just All right, you guys. These two have fundamentally blew my mind with what they know, and they're so young in business. They've only been doing this for three years, but their growth strategy is they went from $40,000 the first year to $250,000 plus the second year, and this year they're going to do over $620,000 in business. If you're just tuning in, go back to part one, but in today's video, you guys, you're going to hear these two kids fundamentally hit on advanced business principles that I've seen few businesses be able to describe so succinctly, so clearly, and understand so thoroughly. And they're going to share all of that with you guys today. So get ready because we're, we're back with Garrett and Marlene. We're going to go to their job. We're going to check everything out. We're going to learn how they learned. We're going to share that with you guys. So hopefully it will help you guys on your own journey so without wasting more time let's do this thing Walk. guys can i ask you something how did you acquire the skills because that's that seems to be a big hurdle for a lot of guys is how do i actually do the job yep, the first you, time you go out and do the work for someone else that's what i did i started my grandpa had his own business i started working with him in the summers when i was 10 years old every summer from when i was 10 the first time i remember running a skid loader i was 10 so when i started i was 17 i'd already been running equipment running machinery, dump trucks for seven years. So I do all this, I've been doing it for years already. So yeah, so, was, so, so that's something that where I was ahead because I started, a lot of guys when they're 10 years old, they don't, they're not out working all summer. They're out dinking around, riding dirt bikes, four wheelers, whatever. Playing video games. Playing yeah. video games, yeah. <laughs> now that's the biggest thing is everyone's doing this. I've never done that once in my life. I've never played a video game in my life, I've worked. <laughs> it's been the same for me. I interned just in the summer. My aunt worked at a landscaping company and she got me in there and I, you know three years four years experience and then i've learned everything as i went networking and google google's helped me google's <laughs> helped you i watch youtube videos i've taught myself all the accounting stuff everything just about uh just about every just about everything you need to know is out there it's just a matter of finding it and looking for it and spending the time and so what do you own for equipment as we walk back mm -hmm. here this was what you guys are gonna see it's not fancy but it's 100% paid for, and this is one of the things that you're gonna have. You guys, I don't care, I'm sick, of, I am so sick of these guys flat, flaunting their brand new equipment, shoving it down your face, because right here, this truly is the road to success, which you guys are gonna see. And what Garrett and what Marlene did in their very first year, the sacrifice it took, tell me about this excavator, because you own this 100%. Yep, yep, so. This I actually bought, so when I was 16, I worked for a big commercial landscape company nearby, and I basically took everything I made that summer 
before I even started the business and bought this. It was, uh, so a guy had it down here in the cities and he went, he basically moved to Northern Minnesota. He went out of business and liquidated his equipment. So uh, I paid 12.5 for it. 12.5, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's flipping awesome. How about the loaders that I see running uh, in the background? This one, that one's leased. This one we bought. Um, we rented for the first year. We No one would give a 17 year old, uh, you know, a skid loader. So we basically, at least that one, we, and we bought this one. And, and this machine, this machine is running every single day at least four hours a day. And the other one, an, an hour to six a day. Every single day. So like, you've got a pretty massive project going on here right now. How did you learn? So first off, tell me real quickly, guys, what is this job? Where, what are we doing with this project? Uh, we're, so we're, the house here is elevated about 14 feet above the water. So we're basically just starting here and cutting the grade down so they have usable space at the lake. So they can put a dock in their boat because it was basically 12 feet right up at the lake so they had no usable lake shore. So I started the permitting process for this about three months ago. So it's been, at first it, it's, it's been a great role, but we finally got a pass. So I first time I stepped foot on this property was about three months ago. And we're gonna use some in the front to fill, there's like a swale in the front. We're gonna kind of level that off and then we're gonna haul the rest away. And then we scraped off all the decomposable soil and stockpiled it over there. And then when we're done, we get the grade cut, we get everything graded out. We're gonna spread that back over here, rotor till it, and break up all the sod, and then seed it, and then put an erosion blanket. So my next question is, is how did you guys figure out on your own to bid a $40,000 project like this? Part, partially from watching your videos, and really like any project, anytime I go in to look at it, I just look at what it's gonna cost me. Break down everything, like every how much fuel that's gonna burn a day, how much I'm paying that guy a day, what our overhead is a day. Just figure out what it's gonna cost you, how many days, and then just plan accordingly. You wanna make 30% or 50%? I always shoot for 50%. After overhead, after fuel, labor, everything, 50% margin. And are you, hit, are you guys hitting 50%? Oh, 35 to 40. 35 to 40, sometimes 50 on smaller jobs. And so, you know, there's always there's a little fluctuation, but I always shoot for a 50. And that's a huge profit margin for a contractor. Do you guys even realize that? Mm -hmm. it, it's hard, it's hard to do. But so, but another thing is like with sales, like, you know, there's good sales guys and there's mediocre sales, sales guys. So like, like you always say, this one thing I just came up with is like, Anytime someone calls you to do a project, if they had a friend that does that, you wouldn't be there. So become their friend that does landscaping or excavating, make a connection with the homeowner, and, and then you can basically get whatever you want for the job. Okay. And then you're their customer for life too, because yep. we have several customers, they have a job, they don't even want to bid. This is what they want to do, and put me on your schedule. Yeah. I love that. That so, is so huge. When true. you develop that relationship, then then the price becomes less of the, of the occupant's matter of scheduling time. Yep. Done, yep. Right? There's some people, budget's all that matters, but there's a lot of people out there, a lot of customers, they just want a good guy. A good guy that communicates with a problem, they let them know. And they, they do what they say, they're gonna, hey, I'll, I'm meeting you now, I'll get this quote sent to you by end of day tomorrow. You have it there by end of day tomorrow, no matter what. That, that's so you live budget. up to your word, no matter what. No matter what, yep. Awesome. All right, I got one last question for each one of you guys, okay? We've got younger kids that are watching this that want to own their own company. You guys have done it. What would you say to the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds that want to do and get to where you are, where you're putting in, you're doing 600 and some thousand plus dollars a year. Marlene, do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, I, using the tools, using the technology, using QuickBooks Online, Jobber, having as many tools in your pocket as you can, not just doing whatever, having as many tools and procedures in place so that everybody, he has an expectation, I have an expectation, this is how things are gonna flow, and creating that when you're small, so when you're big, this is just how we do things. Things, we have procedures and flows. So you said Jobber, is that something that you guys do? We do, yeah. that actually help you? Yes, it's been, amazing for me. I was using Google Calendar and creating spreadsheets with job tracking and the guys trying to look at their phone, they hated it. Trying to look at my spreadsheet while they pull up Jobber, they see their day, everything. It's been such a game changer. Okay, so that, that for the office stuff, you feel that that's been one of your game changers? Yes. Okay. Yep. Garrett, how about you? More of the field sales management. Tell me about, you got the advice you want to give to the 10 to 15 year olds getting started, what do they got to do? So if basically, if you don't have, if they might know someone, their uncle might do a mowing company that they can get all their leads. But basically you've got to get leads, you've got to get work coming in. 
So go knock on people's doors. I would see a guy that has just recently had a dump truck load of topsoil dumped in his front yard. I would go knock on his door, hey, you need that spread. Oh yeah, sure, here you go. Or you know, maybe we already have someone, but you gotta be all going. You, you, you cannot be afraid to just go knock on people's doors or whatever. So you basically, and then set goals and then just do whatever it takes to get there. And you have to constantly be going out of your comfort zone. Right now, if you don't have anything, you're probably living within your comfort zone if you're just getting started out, whatever. That's how like, I basically live outside of my comfort zone. Like, like if I'm not going out of my comfort zone, I'm bored, that's how I've always been. Like, I, I have to constantly be doing something, doing something new. So like, if I don't do anything out of my comfort zone for a day or two, I'll just go look around just for something to do that I, I, I my, that little voice said, no, don't do that. Oh, you got other places to be. Like, no, constantly. If you're not going out of your comfort zone, you're not growing. You're just, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're planed out. So set goals and then it's, you definitely have to go out of your comfort zone too in order to achieve them. So set goals and just do whatever it takes to, to get there. Hi. I'm gonna tell you guys, I, I honestly think these guys are wise beyond their years. What you've said, I, I came out here to expect to hear an interesting story, but not to see you guys fundamentally hit upon so many key things to state it so clearly and concisely and to give really a functional blueprint to these guys. So I want to thank both of you guys. Marlene, thank you. Sorry, I shake left-handed because I hold the camera right-handed. I am actually a righty, but um, so you guys, uh, if these guys wanted to learn more, do you guys have a YouTube, Instagram channel, I do, anything we, like yeah, that? Yeah, on YouTube right now it's Garrett Williams and then our Instagram and Facebook is just GNM Outdoor Services. Um, and yeah, it's uh, YouTube, I try to get in when I can, but uh, yeah, otherwise, if you want to call me or you want any questions or you just want to talk to me, whatever, call me up. My, inter my number's all over the internet. Call me up, ask me about this or that. Let's meet up. I mean, let's, let's connect. Brave. Very brave, you guys. Don't take advantage of them. That's all we got for today's video, you guys. Let me know what you think of this story. I, I love it. I love stuff like this. And I hope, honestly, that it really helps you guys out to take your business to the next level. So thanks to both of these guys for sharing their story. And while I got you here, you gotta do a couple things for me now. Hit the bell notification and, and yeah, subscribe. I, I this. Yeah, and hit the <laughs> hit the video I'm gonna put in this corner, in this corner. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and God bless and go get them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we rent some property for under a hundred dollars a month <laughs> that we park all of our equipment, all of our vehicles, trailers, everything. Um, I work from home and yeah we don't have the overhead that's <laughs> so so this is this is one of those things that i want to bring up because i've been running business for i don't know three decades now and i am exactly the same way i rent space i pay 300 dollars a month for it why because i'm putting all of that money in my back pocket and i'm not handing it over for a mortgage i'm not handing it over to rent yearly taxes i don't have to do maintenance on it i have no worries no issues and it also it's just a it's a much more lean way to operate so a lot of these guys they make the mistake of thinking that they've got to invest in a building they've got to buy land right and i don't think that's the right way to go until you're absolutely 100 percent ready and you have no other like nowhere else to go right i think that's your back's got to be almost against the wall at that point mm -hmm and then you, you are forced to do something. I don't think it's the right way to do it. I think what you guys are doing, keeping it very lean, is how it allows you to invest in a new truck, a new truck, a new truck, a new skid loader, an excavator, leasing equipment. That's why you have all of this, because it's not going out to some static piece of land that isn't making you money. Right, yep. Yeah, we, uh, and another thing is like, I don't like, I don't like any equipment sitting around, so every piece of equipment we have, before I ever buy anything, I make sure I have the work for it. Cause like I hate seeing stuff sit around. So like place we call it Sunny's where we park all our stuff. By come Monday morning, it's completely empty. There's nothing there, a couple snow plows. And on the weekends it's plump full and you can't turn around and it's like, oh, we need something bigger. <laughs> Everybody wants to see my yard, Garrett. Yeah. That's one of those things that I've avoided because I'm like, why do you want to see this? There's nothing, there is nothing there. There shouldn't be, maybe there's, a couple snow plows in the summer. Yes, there's yeah. nothing at my yard because it's always out on a job. You wanna see my yard, I gotta to go to this job, I gotta to go to this job, and I gotta to go to this job. Yep. That's where my equipment is always at. And the only time that I should have equipment is when it's, I failed at something. Mm -hmm. When my equipment is parked, it's either I've made a mistake and I don't have work for it, mm -hmm. or something else has happened. So I don't know, that's just a strategy. All right, all right guys, I could sit out here and talk to these two forever.